communication can make or break your life. Ok, that's quite an extreme statement to make, yet it's a fundamental truth that cannot and should not be ignored. I consider myself a competent communicator. I'm not particularly terrible in verbal communication. For the most part, my body language is actually quite positive and I would like to believe I'm capable in written communication. That said, I totally and wholly believe that my communication skills can improve and through active consideration of how I communicate, I can serve to be a better communicator in all facets of my life. Not only that, I believe that through focusing and improving my communication skills, I can see improvements in other aspects of my life, both in my own productivity and my interactions with others. So I decided to put this theory to the test, as I tested how change in communication would influence my interactions with people and my outlook on life. Now before proceeding, I want to clarify the points I present in this video are based completely on my personal experience meaning what worked and didn't work for me might see different results for you. That said, I do fully believe it's a useful learning experience, one which I've taken important lessons from that have influenced how I communicate with others to this day. Now, let's look at the factors considered in the tests. So when conducting this test, I wanted to try and take a pragmatic approach to what things I considered and monitored during my tests. This meant that fundamentally I tested three different factors in communication, which included verbal communication, non-verbal communication such as body language, style or fashion and listening, and internal communication, specifically self-talk. As I wanted to test the effects of change in communication in areas of my personal and professional life, I decided not to focus on other forms of communications as part of this experience meaning I decided against measuring changes in visual and written forms of communication. That said, it is something I continually look to improve as part of the content on this channel and may be a subject worth revisiting in the future. I chose to categorise forms of communication in the test based on Anne Converse Wilcom's breakdown, with her being the assistant clinical professor at Drexel University. However, one difference in my case was I chose to include internal communication. As for me, how we communicate to ourselves can arguably have the biggest influence in the outcomes we see in life, thus making it pretty much impossible to ignore. In addition to considering the varying types of communication, I also felt it important to consider other factors in my communications. This included considering the environment, as it's normal for people to vary how they communicate based on who they talk to and where. For example, how I speak to friends differs significantly when compared to how I speak to customers. So I decided to break down who I communicated with based on four distinct situations where I found myself in contact with others. These included personal situations, for example the time I spent with friends and family, professional environments, whether it be in the office or online, social situations such as when I interact with acquaintances or people in general. This might include when shopping, talking to other parents when dropping my son to school, or speaking to my neighbours, and what I refer to as micro-social situations, which are extremely small interactions with people or when passing by them in the street. In most cases, this is limited to saying general phrases like hello, thank you, or just making polite or impolite gestures with strangers. Bill Connors, Ned. Part of the reason circumstance and environment were so important to me was that as part of the process, I wanted to test the responses when pushing the limits of social conventions in these circumstances, seeing if people were accepting or disapproving of what I did. And let me just say, I was quite surprised at some of my findings. Now that we better understand some of the variables within the test, let's take a look at the tests conducted. When testing out varying forms of communications in different places, I focused heavily on agreeableness from the big five personality traits, as this allowed me to distinctively shift in how I interacted with others through this experience. That said, I did try and factor in other personality traits, as each personality trait can heavily influence your experience when communicating with others. If you're new to the big five and would like to learn more, let me know in the comments and I will consider making a dedicated video to the idea. For social situations, I decided to test both agreeable and disagreeable behaviour, each being tested over a period of 15 days, adding to a total of 30 days. 
When disagreeable, I chose to have less approachable body language, in that I wouldn't put as much care in dressing up and would be more direct or curt when speaking. At times, this meant I was less open to new experiences and showing lower levels of extroversion, though these factors would vary, as I didn't want to go to extremes that I knew would negatively hurt my relationships for the sake of proving something we already know. Rather, the process was to see how people would respond when I was less hesitant to speak my mind and share opinions, even if potentially controversial. I was also less willing to show adherence to social conventions, meaning I didn't particularly care to make a positive impression on the strangers that I knew I wouldn't have any future interactions with. I also decided to show more highly agreeable traits for the other 15 days. This meant showing clear adherence to social and professional conventions, putting myself forward to be willing to do favours, being more friendly to people I didn't know and probably wouldn't have any future interactions with. It was also a willingness to have more positive body language, a more upbeat and friendly demeanour and generally being more welcoming and facilitating to others. The other aspect of the test was to try both positive and negative self-talk during the 30 days in order to see how much influence it had on my behaviour and productivity throughout the tests. This was predominantly done through focused affirmations I said daily and through self care rituals I set up for myself, and standard stress management techniques. The tests were difficult and in truth I did have moments where I feared I would give up, but in the end I persevered and found some particularly interesting results. As you might expect, positive communication in most situations resulted in more friendly and positive interactions. Hardly groundbreaking news, right? However, it's how I utilise positive communication in different scenarios that I found particularly interesting. For example, in shops, I was able to have more friendly conversations with staff, leading to better quality service in return as they seemed more open to helping me with my needs. In the street, people almost always responded positively to positive body language, so a smile was almost always responded to with a smile in return, and in many cases a greeting of some kind. How I dressed also played an important role, with people generally being more agreeable with me when I dressed well. First impressions are critical, with studies showing that non-verbal cues can have over 4 times the impact on the impression you make than anything you say. I found that when I dressed in relatively smart casual, in a way which is generally accepted in all of society, the response I got in return was significantly better than when I didn't take care of my appearance. Where things became particularly interesting was when I entered a professional environment, where I found balance of agreeableness and disagreeable behaviour actually proved to be fruitful. Now, to clarify, being stubbornly disagreeable would often result in no positive outcome for either party, which was unfruitful almost all of the time. However, the same could be said of being agreeable, which was equally unproductive when solutions to problems were needed, raising stress levels both in myself and consequently others, as it led to overwhelming workload and responsibility. Finding a balance to make clear that it was in the interest of all parties to work together to come to a solution and putting forward proposals to meet my personal needs led to more productive output, often with some compromise from each party, but ultimately achieving the desired outcomes to satisfy everyone. Fundamentally, some levels of disagreeableness, specifically where it was with a pragmatic nature with the interest of delivering results in mind, led to outcomes where others would be open to suggestions and ideas that they may otherwise not like. As a result, this was actually extremely constructive in reaching positive conclusions despite having to enter some levels of conflict to reach there. I also found that when supporting others, they would respond more positively to encouragement where they can come to find their own solutions, as opposed to just being offered solutions to their problems. In many cases, the response I found was that people often listen to solutions without actively following them up with action. Whether they dismiss the solution's efficacy or doubt me as the figure suggesting is difficult to tell, but ultimately I found that when people are encouraged and ultimately reach the same conclusions themselves, they are much more active with following through. Therefore, today I often don't seek to simply offer solutions when people come to me. Rather, I focus on trying to have a discussion where they reach a satisfactory conclusion themselves, which in truth is often the same as what I would have suggested myself. This seems to have led to greater respect for me, but more importantly, I think the result leads to the individuals feeling a greater sense of satisfaction themselves in overcoming obstacles. 
Now, moving on to personal circumstances, I found that, as with professional environments, disagreeable behaviour led to negative responses that made for awkward or difficult interactions. Where things differed a little was that, at times, it was more important to be agreeable for the relationship, something I believe to be the case as personal relationships often appear to be more emotional investments than professional relationships. Being sensitive or empathetic to the emotional needs of people in my life became a fundamental factor in these situations, often leading to reciprocity and development in personal bonds. In these situations, positive behaviours and communication led to far more positive results and happier moments. Now to focus on arguably the most important factor. Self-talk was fundamental in changing my outlook on how I approach challenges in my life. Most importantly, I found taking time to feel grateful for the people in my life made me naturally more inclined to respond and communicate positively with them, even in moments of disagreement. For example, this led to empathy when in meetings, which helped towards achieving an outcome that was more satisfactory. While I still disagreed in these scenarios, I did so by placing careful emphasis in how I spoke to people, leading to them being a little more open to suggestions and generally less conflictive. In addition to practicing gratitude, I spent time each day saying positive and self-affirming self-talk, which also improved my productive output, increasing motivation and belief in what I was doing. And look, belief is a powerful thing. It builds self-esteem which has been found in numerous research to have beneficial effects in well-being and a sense of satisfaction, often translating to results to back up the sensation. So, I'd like to share some concluding thoughts. All of this has led to outstanding results for me, which has led to a drastic shift in a positive direction in how I interacted with others, and the outcomes I saw from those interactions. My initial concerns around being more disagreeable actually proved to be false, at least in a professional environment, as while I had to maintain a balance in how I communicated, when done correctly, the results clearly showed benefits in my well-being and workload when at work. On the whole, the biggest lesson I found was that how we communicate can have huge impacts in your life, with often small, almost unnoticeable changes in both your demeanour and presentation can have drastic effects. Small things like a little smile can brighten up both your day and the person you smile to. Doing this repeatedly actually saw a significant improvement in my general mood, no doubt due to the dopaminergic effects that smiling can have. I've also built and developed stronger relationships, all the while actually feeling like I'm more true to myself than ever before. In terms of productivity, I equally feel that positive communication has had a drastic effect. All of this, whether it be my interactions with others or feeling a sense of satisfaction and motivation within myself, is built on the foundations of self-talk. I feel had I not placed heavy emphasis in my internal communication, I would have slipped up in maintaining my personal growth at the numerous hurdles I faced when trying out this experiment and adjusting during the process. So be sure to communicate effectively, not least with yourself. If you've reached this far, I want to thank you for watching this video and I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. It makes the effort all the more worth it. Please be sure to check out the video on screen now for more.